hi everyone and welcome to another youtube video so in today's video we are going to be talking about the levels or the scales of measurement of data set this topic is actually important to you as a data analyst because knowing the type of data set that you have at hand and the levels or the scales of data sets that you have at hand actually go a very long way with your data analysis so stay to the end of this video with me where i'll be using a proper real life data set and uh, a proper data analysis question to tell you how important it is to to know the type of data set or the levels or skills of measurement of data set that you have at hand so without further ado let's jump into the video So basically, we actually have four levels of measurement of data set. We have the nominal scale, we have the ordinal scale, we have the interval scale and we have the ratio scale. The nominal scale and the ordinal scale are actually categorical or qualitative in nature, meaning we can't attach a numerical value to them or we can't attach a number to them. The only thing we can do is to count, to group and to rank them. The interval scale and the ratio scale on the other hand can actually take a numerical value, that is we can actually attach a number to them. As a data analyst, most times you come across uh, numerical data, so that simply means you are going to be meeting more of interval and ratio scale. I'm not saying you're not going to be meeting ordinal or nominal. You will definitely meet those skills. A larger chunk of the time, you're actually going to be meeting with the interval and the ratio skills of measurement of data. So let's jump into this guy properly. And the first is for us to define the nominal scale. So a data set is set to be on the nominal scale if it can take a numerical value. And secondly, uh, we can only use the scale of data sets to actually group only and name so basically uh, your nominal scale is basically used in naming and grouping examples include gender types of color the country you are from your tribe just to mention a few an ordinal scale on the other hand is actually a nominal scale that has a rank attached to it in simple terms for an ordinal scale you can attach a name to it meaning you can use it to name your data set it can be used to group your data set and it also has a rank attached to it examples of ordinal scale includes the military rank you know we have the five star we have the four star we have the three star someone on the five star is more than someone on the three star and we also have the socioeconomic status so it's either you are on the middle class the lower class or the high class we also have the level of education you know we have the bsc we have the msc we have the phd we have the professors so you know each of this has level and it has a rank attached to it and interval scale is numerical the word interval is synonymous to difference meaning we have a bigger value somewhere and we have a smaller value somewhere then if you decide to take a difference you can have a value attached to them so this is one of the properties that defines an interval scale and that is the fact that an interval scale can be used to name obviously it can be used to group it can also be used to rank some of the mathematical properties of an interval scale includes the fact that it can be added and it can be subtracted we also need to know that an interval scale can also take negative value but an interval scale does not have a true zero what is a true zero i will be defining a true zero when i'm trying to talk about the ratio scale example of your interval scale includes your iq score your sat score that is your exam scores uh your credit scores just to mention a few and the ratio scale is actually the most complete scale in the world of statistics and data analysis because it consists of all the properties of nominal ordinal and interval now the word ratio actually means you are dividing something so one of the properties of a ratio scale is based on the fact that you can actually divide uh, any values on this scale take for example you are actually moving at a speed of let me say 100 meter per second and then i'm moving at a speed of let me say 50 meter per second it means you are moving as twice as fast as i am you know you get the logic i'm trying to say so anything on a ratio scale can actually be divided some of the other properties of a ratio scale include the fact that it can be multiplied it has a true zero now a true zero is a value on the scale where the variable of interest can actually take a zero value take for example it is possible for you to have zero amount of money in your bank account so amount of money in this case of ours is actually uh, a ratio scale some of the examples of ratio skills includes the weight, we have height, we have speed, 
just to mention a few so a friend of mine messaged me a few days ago and he said he has a data analysis question so i'm going to be posting the question right here all you have to do is to pause and then just view the question and then we'll just take things from there so this is the question right here and it is about an office that is you no know, that sells office supplies and it's just trying to maximize profit so the question went on to tell us that you know uh the data set contains 2001 records and includes the following very we have row id we have other id we have other date down to profits taking a closer look at those uh, variables right here we can see that variables like profit discounts quantity sales are actually uh numerical in nature these variables are actually on the ratio scale and then we also have things like row id other states ship mode they are actually on the either the nominal scale or the ordinal scale the question first is that undertake a correlation to determine which variables are correlated with total profits now total profit is one of the variables we are interested in i want you to use total profits to correlate with other variables now correlation is actually a test that is usually used with numerical values meaning before you can use the concept of correlation the variables that you are working with on your data set must be numerical that is the two variables must be quantifiable now this question right here is now telling us to correlate total profit with some variables now some of the variables it is telling us to correlate with total profit are actually categorical variables and like i said earlier on categorical variables can never take a numerical value so whenever you find yourself in a situation whereby the question is telling you to use categorical variables to work where numerical variables are actually supposed to be used then the concept of dummy variables comes inside so let's take gender for example gender is on the uh, the nominal scale and it is a qualitative data if i want to attach a number to gender i can say let one be male let two be female in terms of responses responses are also uh categorical in nature and they are on the nominal scale so i can say let one be yes and let zero be no once you attach dummy variables to your categorical variable you will actually be able to use your categorical variable to perform proper numerical analysis so let's go back to the worksheet and see what my friend did in the long run so he was able to attach dummy variables to the categorical variables and this is the result of his analysis we actually used microsoft excel to perform correlation analysis on the data set you can see total profits furniture office supplies technology then we can also see furniture office supply and tech you can see that the correlation between total profit and furniture is minus 0 0.9989 the correlation between uh, total profit and office supplies is 0 0.4589 which is a positive correlation and the correlation between total profit and technology is actually equals to 0 0.5390 and we have other variables that have been correlated with total profit right there as you can see so this goes on to show that knowing the type of data set that you have at hand and the scales of data set that you have at hand will go a long way to make you know how you can approach your data analysis problem shout out to crown test on twitter by the way i would be dropping his link so you can just go follow him out he's one of the best data analysts right there if you enjoyed this video and you learned something new please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel do you have some questions for me or do you think i missed something right there so go down to the comment section and drop your questions thanks for making it to the end of this video and we we'll see you in the next one bye for now